Worried by the nation's rising public debt profile, Nigerians and economists decried the poor application of the loans collected by the federal government and the burden that the debt of about 77 trillion naira will have on the incoming administration. Mazisa Mohuabongwa, OFR, founder and former CEO of Nimet Pharmaceutical, 2023 presidential aspirant and economist joins us this morning to assess Nigeria's debt burden on the citizens. We will also be looking at the impact of technology in agriculture. Is it a blessing or is it a curse? Uh, we'll look at the issues of industrialized farming, slaughterhouses, and a whole lot more, and the impact of technology on Greek on the show today. We'll also be taking a look at some of the headlines on some national dailies. With an analyst joining us on Off the Press to look at these headlines. Good morning and welcome to the Tuesday edition of The Breakfast. It is a Technophile edition and I am Maureen. And I'm Justin Akadunia. Thanks for joining us today. Well, the theme of today's program is technology causing inhumane treatment of animals to feed us. Well, industrialized farming is a mm. thing today and also uh, slaughterhouses is a mm. thing. Greenhouse emission is a thing. How do we lot. use technology? Yeah, to, to actually boost. better our lives exactly. and, uh, without actually affecting uh, the ecosystem that we are supposed to even be protecting exactly. in the first place. Yes. So we need to strike a balance. Yes, a very good balance. <laughs> that is just the thing. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, well, top trending today, number one is resident doctors to begin five-day warning strike on Wednesday. Wednesday. That is something that it's just up in the air. Mm. Mixed feelings, really, because on one hand, you, you feel for these doctors. Mm. They have gone through so much to become doctors. True. They are lifesavers, yeah. yet they are not getting enough for the job that they do. Yes, uh, it's actually very sad. It's also coming on the heels of uh, this uh, uh, proposed law. They want to uh, slam on doctors, if I have to use that word, uh, you know, asking them to work for at least five years before they can actually seek uh, greener pastures and all that. And the doctors are actually kicking against it, and they are proposing to go on strike from uh, tomorrow morning. You know what happens when doctors go on of strike? Of course. People die. Mm. How many people can afford to go to private hospitals in this country? That's, that's Inflation has increased. By the day. By the day. And then the sad thing is that, you know, those in government who should have fixed the hospitals, mm. who, have, who should have paid these doctors mm. the kind of wages that they deserve, yes. are going outside of this country for the smallest of infections and things like that. And so you're not fixing the home front. Mm. You're going out there to get what you should have gotten home had I'm you really. fixed mm. home. And so it is the poor man that's suffering all of this. Yes, it the is. The masses. Like you said, uh, the average Nigerian cannot actually uh, get uh, the specialized treatment that they would require at uh, specialist hospitals and private hospitals. So at the end of the day, they are uh, rushing to the primary health care centers. They're going to the secondary ones. And of course, and the tertiary ones owned by government because... And most of the times you find out that, 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 that it is actually subsidized because we've been talking about health insurance in Nigeria, but you, you will agree with me that the average Nigerian pays for his health expenses out of his pocket. Of course. And it is really, really sad when that should not even be the case. You know, the issue of the, when you talk of health insurance, you should be able to take care of um, the bulk of the issues of your health. You're, not, you should, you're supposed to just go to sleep knowing that uh, there is some sort of protection for you. But it is, it is not the case. At the end of the day, you have to pay through your nose. Uh, even the same government hospitals, you know, you, you have to, <laughs> you know, the, the, the stress of um, getting um, cards. The way and they and treat the doctor, people and in some thing. of these government hospitals is, is just not in short of appalling. And then yeah. all that. And then if you go to the private hospitals, just yes. buying the card alone, <laughs> Just buying card alone, mm -hmm. you've already spent the whole chunk of you the did. money that mm -hmm. you do not have. Mm -hmm. Talk about the Nigerian that's receiving the minimum wage of 30000 30, naira. For instance, Maureen, okay, let, let me just get an instance uh, for uh, an eye care that I, I had to go to some test sometime last year. Uh, I think to get the card was about um, 7500 to get the card. Mm -hmm. And if I have to pay, you have to see a consultant, I have to pay consultants a fee of about 15000 naira, mm -hmm. you know, before, before the, they run the tests and all the things. And then administer <laughs> whatever you need to. No, so imagine, it's, it's just, a lot just has a got to be done. Yeah, the incoming government mm. has a lot, he's, he has his work cut out for him, mm. and we just want to see things change. 
we, we have to, you know, okay, and the, the Minister of Labor uh, is in the news. Uh, he is saying that uh, the same proposed law is illegal because he was questioned. There was an extraordinary uh, Federal Executive Council meeting yesterday, and State House correspondent asked him uh, because uh, they wanted to find out what he his plan uh, was concerning Dr. Strike from tomorrow. He said mm. that that law is uh, will not uh, see the light of day because it, it is actually going to be an illegality in the first place. Of course. And so we just hope that uh, this can be sorted out because we, don't, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't be toying with our healthcare uh, you know, uh, provision for Nigerians because if uh, our doctors go on strike, like Maureen said, uh, the patients would die and um, ordinary people would not be able to be productive at so it has like a rippling effect on the economy and we don't want to see doctors because over time more in the NARD, that's the National Association of Resident Doctors, they go on strike. Uh, at the end of the day, you go to the hospitals and no consultants would see you because uh, they tell you that um, doctors are not working and you see mothers begging uh, nurses and other medical experts to just uh, check on their children. Yeah, and this strikes one time too many, mm. one time too many and um, but another thing is, this administration just has few days to go. Mm, of what are. import will this particular, mm. uh, you know, strike have? Mm. Some have suggested that they should hold on for the next incoming government well, to come any, in. Is there, is there any better time to? Because uh, fine, you uh, they have just they can't do anything in thirteen days, uh, but they just want to press. Uh, their demands home. They want to make their demands known. And uh, so if the incoming administration uh, sets uh, to work uh, in 13 days, they will be aware that there are, there are issues on ground, so they will not just like, they will know how to oh, set This is not the first, not the second time. No, it, it the, well. the issues are up there. They've been up there. I mean, we've been talking about this in the past couple of weeks now. Um, mm. Their strike, the warning strikes, mm -hmm. um, even the exclusion of some of them, the nurses, from the, the forty percent, uh, yeah, you know, so a lot of things are out there regarding the health sector. Mm. So any incoming government would not say that he or she is ignorant. That, that, Can't that, be that, ignorant that, 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 if you are ignorant yeah. of what the health sector has been going through and is going through. Then you are not even qualified to go in there in the first place. True, because you should know what uh, the, the the issues are. Issues are uh, the pains that people go through. Uh, we'll talk of um, biting inflation. You are increasing uh, salaries by forty percent, and inflation, uh, food in inflation, is about eighty-five percent. At the end of the day, so there's still a gap. There is. Although that um, 40 percent mm. was said to be a, a one-off thing, a one-off <laughs> benefit, you know, some of all those technicalities. Well, let's talk about Hilda Bassi, who has uh -huh. cooked for hundred hours, surpassing the current world record uh, uh, by Lata Tandon, mm. an Indian. Let me even ask you: How long can you stand to cook? As in, <laughs> <laughs> if you're just making an avid meal, would you be able to stand all through making? The I can't meal? even cook throughout the day. I love mm. to cook. I'm yes. a foodie. I love food. Mm. But to stand for four days cooking mm. is not something I can boast of. Mm. This is no mean feat that Hilda has achieved. At all. At and uh, well, Guinness Records has acknowledged it. Mm -hmm. They've acknowledged it. Yeah. And they're waiting to review the evidence okay. to then confirm it. But they have acknowledged it mm. because it's no mean feat at all. At all. For the fact alone that she dared to do it, and she, uh, she even set a record for us. I think she surpassed her own record. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I can imagine the cramps and the pain that she would have felt in that four days. I hear she uh, she she took a five minutes break in a, in every hour or something. Uh, Maureen, I don't I, I I love cooking too. I love food like you do, but I don't know if it's something I have that passion and I would want to uh, uh, <laughs> cook for four days nonstop. I didn't really follow the story as about what she was cooking. I wonder what, what kind of meal she'll be making in that four days. <laughs> well, just like you, I didn't quite follow it, mm. you know, back to back. I yeah. didn't I didn't follow it at all, other than the details, you know, the, yeah. the, 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 the details of it. But I understand that she did cook a lot. Of course, if mm. you cook for four days, you will cook a lot. I'm sure she, she, and made, someone... <laughs> she made a mala. She made rice. She made jello fries. She made several meals. And someone was asking, how, how is it that she just kept coming up 
up with coming up with you know different well, she, look, she didn't yeah. just start today mm. her mom is a you know has a restaurant yeah. she has a restaurant mm. so it's something that she's used to consistency mm -hmm. consistency is mm -hmm. what has given her this perfection mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's a lot of lessons for everyone it is a lesson another one, a huge lesson to be learned from this is that uh, if you believe in a particular thing and mm -hmm. uh, just don't stop at it just go out for it uh, you know completely and uh, of course uh, you can achieve whatever you have set um, out to do because uh, there's nothing that can stop you you're the only one that can limit yourself if you have interest in a particular thing if you feel that ah, i have to get this i have to get this in two days you know you can start from somewhere just go go for it don't just think about it just do it that's, that's, that's a good thing you said because I do understand that before now she had sought for you know some sort of investments mm. you know she has looked for investors to invest in her cooking whatever mm. and she didn't get it but mm. today trust me they will rush her like she's everywhere they, they will rush her like her. She, she I even has she had sponsors and even after the whole event you can imagine the publicity that she has gotten and uh, she can even give her not make her restaurant like a global place uh, very soon because she's in the eyes of the world right now. She is in the eyes of the world right now. That's the best way to put it: the eyes of the world. Mm. Of course, we've seen top government officials visiting mm -hmm. and acknowledging her. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful thing, mm -hmm. and I'm sure uh, the governor of her state would also want to do something. You know how we like to grab successful yes, people. Now. We want to, you know, get ourselves attached to them. You well. don't recognize your indigents or your citizens mm -hmm. when they are not when they are suffering, <laughs> but when they achieve. Something something and then oh they become your trophy that's the it's, thing. it's such a hypocritical that's thing to do yeah. yeah so before we leave that stuff again i don't know is it something about people from that particular part of the country and they know knowing how to cook it's their natural gift <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the natural gifts yeah none of the natural gifts people from that place are mm. known to have yeah. the second gift i'm not going to say it right here <laughs> because this is the breakfast and it's time for us to give you the weather report we'll be back in a moment to stay with us we're seeing history being made before our very eyes and a young star doing that as well and i i believe that she's going to motivate a lot of other youngsters Everybody's going to rise up to the occasion and say, hey, we can do this. If she can do it, we can do it. And that's good. And for the first time in a long time, we're having something positive coming up from Nigeria. What my take is, is simple. Um, this is a very, um, a very challenging call for a lot of people out there. This was there all the while. And she woke up one morning and said, I want to embark on this journey. And she did it. And now see the number of people that came out to support her. So it just tells you that whatever you're doing, aim for the the highest heights um uh of course social media makes you feel like you know people because we are all in the same industry and space but when you see somebody doing something phenomenal the energy and everything the fact that she wants to even beat and go further is just to show you because of the amount of support she's getting this is not just a win for hilda it's a win for nigeria it's a win for africa well my take is that nigeria to the world music industry entertainment now the kitchen industry, if I put it that way. <laughs> so she's making every one of us proud, not just all females, but every Nigerian and African right now here. She is a, she is a superwoman. I'm so proud of her as a woman. I think she's done well, and I think that this is something we should emulate across the way you can show that young girls can actually put their mind to something and get it done. Well, there you have that report on Hilda. Beautiful there. Yeah, very, very wonderful. Like I said, just put your mind to whatever you believe in and that you can actually achieve. Uh, she's a superwoman and uh, she is doing Nigeria and, of course, Africa very, very proud. Nigeria to the world. <laughs> Nigeria to the world.